in today's video, we're going to do a deep dive into three of my most recent portfolio additions, and we're going to get started right here in the industrial sector with Snap-on Tools. Now, if you're a new investor, dividend or otherwise, it's important to know that you can review any company website and dig into their investor relations page. And it's here we can review updates, earnings call information, which you can see if we scroll up is actually coming up here on February 2nd for Snap-on. You can also look at share price history and a little bit of tidbits like right here that Snap-on just announced in November a dividend increase of 14.1%. Now, if you're not familiar with Snap-on, they are a leading global innovator, manufacturer, and marketer of tools, equipment, diagnostics, repair information, and system solutions for professional users performing critical tasks, including those working in vehicle repair, aerospace, and the military. Now let's pop on over to Seeking Alpha and get some additional details on how Snap-on is performing from a share price perspective. One of the first things that you'll notice here is that they've actually had some pretty strong share price appreciation in the last year, and they're up by 13.68%. The forward earnings per share is at 16.58 and the forward PE is only at 14.53. And for me, I'd like that to be under 20 as part of my dividend investing strategy. Shareholders are receiving $6.48 for each share that they own and the dividend yield right now is 2.72%. Looking at the income statement and specifically, let's look at the revenues and you can see that overall in the last 10 years, Snap-on has had some pretty steady revenue growth. We did see a bit of a drop off coming out of 2020 into 2021, which interestingly enough, there's no 2020 listed in this chart for some reason on Snap-on, but we can see that there's generally been some good total revenue growth over time. Looking at the basic earnings per share, we see a nice increase year over year, which is also seen in the dividends per share that Snap-on is paying out to its investors. And we can see here that that has been increasing year over year. In addition, we also see a nice reduction in the shares outstanding for Snap-on. Let's check out the dividend grades assigned to Snap-on by Seeking Alpha. The grading system is a proprietary ranking system which they're using to compare one company to another of those that are traded in the same sector. And for Snap-on, it's the industrial sector. You can see a ratings in safety, growth, and consistency, and a B plus rating for dividend yield, which if we scroll down, you can see at the present time is at 2.72%. Remember, yield percentage is going to fluctuate as the share price moves up and down because the payout rate is set by the board of directors and is flat. So as share prices go up, the yield is going to go down. And as share prices go down, the yield is going to go up. And that's why most dividend investors get pretty excited as the share prices drop because it's that point they're able to enter into a position with a higher dividend yield. A few more things that I love about Snap-on are the payout ratio, which is currently set at 34.4%, which is well below my benchmark of less than 60%, and a phenomenal dividend growth rate of 14.79% in the last five years. And I also love the consistency here. We've got 13 years of growing their dividend. Snap-on pays out their dividends in the March, June, September, and December cycle throughout the year. And right now we can expect to receive $6.48 for each share that we own. I personally own just about one share, so I'll happily take the $6. Now let's pop on over to the charting feature so we can see what the total return looks like for Snap-on. And as a review, total return is any share price appreciation plus those dividends received being reinvested into that company. We can see here that in the last year, Snap-on's had a pretty good total return of 16.71%. And you'll see Snap-on is shown in that orange line across this graph. In the last three years, we have a 52.84% total return. And in the last five years, we have a 47.4%. And in the last 10 years, a 258.38% total return. And if we take it out to the max, you can see a 2,759.35% total return. Don't I wish I had shares of Snap-on back in 1993. But lucky me, I actually have one share in 2023. But let's see what else I added to my portfolio in the last month. Checking out the investor relations page for Broadcom, there's just so much information to get lost in. One of the things that I like to look at are their presentations so that you can see on a quarterly basis how they're performing. And if you missed the live earnings call, you can actually scroll through the slide deck to see what was discussed on that call. And we're actually going to move forward and take a look at their annual financial data. And you can see here, this is the last five years in review. The net revenues are on the rise. Their gross margin is on the rise. Their adjusted earnings before interest taxes, 
depreciation and amortization is on the rise. And what's really excited, you guys, is the free cash flow that's continued to increase year over year in the last five years. Free cash flow is important because it's that with which they pay the shareholders their dividends. Now let's jump back over to Seeking Alpha. Now I definitely had a moment of sticker shock when I saw the share price of Broadcom, but I can buy small bits at a time and I'm the proud owner of 0.116 shares. So, you know, I've got $66 worth at this point in time. I'm gonna keep adding. But looking at the last year, we can see that they're actually up in share price by 4.21%, have an earnings per share of 40.9 and a forward price to earnings of 14. Shareholders are paid $18.40 for each share that they hold, and the current yield, based on the share price, is at 3.22%. Looking at the dividend grades for Broadcom, we've got an A plus in both safety and growth, an A in dividend yield, and a B plus in consistency. And again, these ratings are relative to other companies that are traded within the IT sector. The payout ratio is 44.9%, but hold on to your hat. Look at the five-year dividend growth rate, 28.57%, which is phenomenal. And they've been consistently growing this dividend for the last 11 years. Like Snap-on, Broadcom is paying out their dividends in the March, June, September, and December cycle. And in looking at the total return, we can probably anticipate that with that dividend growth rate in the high 20s, we should have some pretty solid total returns. And in the last year, we can see a total return for Broadcom again in the orange line there of 7.56%. In the last three years, we have a 105.91% total return. At the five-year mark, 158% total return. And in the last 10 years, going back to 2013, we have a 2,064.94% total return. And now the last company that I added to my portfolio recently is Lowe's, and it's a dividend aristocrat working towards king status with 48 years of dividend growth. Now, if you weren't aware, Lowe's is a home improvement company with a garden center that I frequent quite often each spring. You can see here that their earnings call for quarter four of 2022 is coming up on March 1st. And there's actually an opportunity for you to add that to the calendar if you want to be able to be a part of that call. There is a ton of information on the investor relations page for Lowe's, but if you want to dig in and get a little bit more information, you can certainly go through their quarterly earnings. And one of my favorite things to look at is actually the infographics because you can consume a lot of information fairly quickly. And one of my favorite things about the quarter three 2022 results is that they returned $47 million to the shareholders through dividends and share repurchase. Now, if we head back to Seeking Alpha, you can see that Lowe's is currently trading just over $200 a share. And in the last year, they're down in share price by 8.66%. Earnings per share is 13.79. They've got a forward price to earnings ratio of 15.11. The dividend yield moving forward right now is $4.20 for each share you own. And the yield, again, fluctuating as the share price does, is presently at 2.05%. Moving on to the financials tab, we can see that total revenues for Lowe's have been consistently on the rise year over year in the last 10 years. Now I'm personally a DIYer and have plans later to paint my bathroom, so I need to go grab some blue painter's tape. But at any rate, the other factor that I like to see here for Lowe's is the basics earnings per share is also on the rise and they're consistently reducing the shares outstanding. And take a peek at the last 10 years of dividend growth for Lowe's. Now, it does look to me like there's some conflicting information here because they're saying there's 59 years of dividend growth, and I've actually seen 48 in multiple places. But what I want to draw your attention to is that five-year dividend growth rate of 19.47%, and the payout ratio is really pretty low at 27.97%. Lowe's pays out their dividends on the February, May, August, November dividend cycle. Now, let's talk about total return for Lowe's. And in the last year, you can see that while they did have a negative total return, it did still beat that of the S&P 500. Looking at the last three years, we can see a 77% total return. In the last five years, we're doubling that of the S&P 500 at 107.76%. And in the last 10 years, we can see that this is just simply outstanding. It's 527.33% total return. So what about you all? What have been your recent portfolio additions? Anyone have shares of Snap-on, Broadcom, or Lowe's? Share a comment with me below, and now go and watch this video next.